Hello. All right. Hope you can hear me okay. I want to talk about the um, van life and tiny house craze and all of this stuff. Uh, people trying to make it look glamorous. I'm just leaving the public quarter cold shower, by the way. It took me 45 minutes to get here from my house, and now I have to drive an hour in the opposite direction so I can get to my minimum wage job. So, when I had a home, and I traveled in the van, and sometimes four months at a time, and, you know, with my children, all, yeah, it was great, it was awesome, it was cool, it was even somewhat glamorous. Um, thing was, is I had a home to go back to. It didn't matter that, you know, I had to figure out how I was going to take a shower for a short period of time or campgrounds, this and that. That was fine, right? Um, yeah, so this whole van life craze, blah, 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 I was doing it long before it became a fad and became cool. All right, so tiny home thing. Look, people have been living in trailers and RVs since they were invented. Why? Not because we're cool or green or this and that. It's because many of us were forced into it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Now, if you have a trust fund or some type of income or parents or loved ones or this and that and you want to go on an adventure and explore, yeah, van life is great. I highly recommend it for everyone. But is it this glamorous, sustainable lifestyle that people want to promote? Well, let's say you uh, live or work in a city. <laughs> How many cities do you know where you're allowed to uh, sleep in your car, your van, whatever? Not very many. For me, I've expressed in a few of my videos uh, how difficult it is for me to live in these conditions and not be able to wash my own ass and things like that. And if you have this big RV and you don't have to get to work to a minimum wage job to earn your way back into society after a brain infection, good, I'm glad. But if you literally, like most of us, were forced into it, I completely resent people trying to make it look glamorous. I resent other people telling me, oh, do more of it and showing me other people's videos and how great it is and articles, oh, it's so great. No, it's not great. It's, I'm trying to live a life and work my way back to society, okay? A home where I can wash my own butt, cook my own food, grow my own food, so I'm less dependent. Yeah. Okay, so I can't do any of this, and those of you who know me, that's my loves, that's how I've made my income, that's how I, that's my passion. It is also of utmost importance for me to keep my diet clean if I want to stay healthy. Okay buying food from all these other places, trusting grocery stores and restaurants and, you know, eating snack foods, not being able to make my own juice and things like that. It's not glamorous. Now, if you don't cook or clean or you're not like a domestic goddess and that's not your livelihood and it's not your passion, great, okay? And you can sustain it affordably, but the rest of us can. So for me, I am, I always pay rent wherever I park, whether it's rent on somebody's dirt or driveway or campground or whatever it is, wherever I live, I'm paying rent. Then I'm paying the storage. Then I'm paying extra to drive back and forth to laundromats and for, you know, for clean uniforms and this and that. Then the not having an address thing. I've already talked about that in the other video about the only people legally able to discriminate against homeless people. Yeah. Dude, seriously, I'm going to smoke. 
and save it, dude. They're not cigarettes to begin with. It's natural tobacco, okay? I did a two-hour show on the history of the spiritual and medicinal uses of tobacco. If you want to see for yourself, go to Walter Reed Army Medical Clinic and search for medicinal uses of tobacco and you'll see over 50 medicinal uses. Tobacco and cigarettes are not the same thing. Save your shit. Thank you. All right. <laughs> this is my, this and coffee, my one freaking comfort living this lifestyle. And you want to freaking correct me? I didn't choose this. I chose this over being abused and staying in limiting environments, but I didn't choose to live in subhuman, subpar conditions. Okay? I don't live a disposable lifestyle. I take pride in keeping a clean, beautiful, tidy, healthful home that is able to bless other people, including myself, with the food that I grew myself to turn into medicine to help myself and those around me. Yeah, stop this shit. It is not glamorous. Okay, there's this other guy. He's so sweet and cute. And he's always, oh, I'm homeless by choice since, you know, such and such day, blah, blah, blah. And I called him out the other day. I said, bullshit, you're not homeless by choice. You're homeless because you were abandoned. You make 700 or 900 bucks a month and a government disability check and that doesn't pay the rent. That's the facts, okay? We're not homeless by choice, <laughs> okay? Some of us have choices to say, live in an abusive environment or homelessness. I choose homelessness when those are my only two options. But did I choose? No, no. I think that is extremely insulting. Um, making all of this shit glamorous. And let me talk about the tiny home thing, which is bullshit. See, everybody that, you know, and I'm in groups of both sides of the issue here in the Pacific Northwest about affordable housing. And... The bottom line is they all want the government to fix it. And, oh, why don't you build a tiny home community? Why don't you build this? Why don't you build that? Oh, we'll take it out of your taxes. No, we'll take it out of those taxes. Oh, no, we'll come up with a plan in seven years. Blah, blah, blah. All this stuff. But here's the thing. Nobody needs to invest one more single dollar to end homelessness. <laughs> nope. There are already... Empty homes, empty buildings, empty hotels, empty properties, empty garages, empty RVs, sitting in your driveway even, shelters, mother-in-law apartments, extra rooms, attics, basements, etc. They already exist. Many of the people, especially around here, own two or three homes. And they're all empty. Maybe one person living in one. The rest are empty. Yep, that's why we're homeless. And sometimes, again, when I had a home to go back to, the van life was awesome. Is it sustainable long term for the rest of my life? No. So, yeah, it is not glamorous. And I don't appreciate people, oh, well, look at this, this person's doing it. But yeah, do it for the next 40 years. Do it for four fucking years. Working minimum wage jobs, you do it. Yeah, you like it, you think it's so cool, you think it's so glamorous, do it. But don't push it on me, because I'm at the point where anyone pushing subhuman conditions on me is out of my life. You live it first. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, and I want to hear from people who are forced into this, whether, you know, you ran away from abuse, or you had, you know, you lost a job, or you're, you know, whatever happened that caused you to do this. But I guarantee it's economics. Economics and lack of love, lack of a support system. That's what it is. Yeah, so when you're only making 800 a month or 1500 a month or even $2,000 a month and the rent is $1,500 a month, doesn't even cover the expenses or getting to work or health or gas or car insurance or any of that, 
it doesn't add up. That's why we are homeless and that's why we chose the van life. Have a good day.